A new feature in the New York Times offers a blueprint on how to bring communities back together who have been torn apart by the raging political wildfire that has engulfed the nation since the rise of Trump. Two years ago, tensions in the town of Silverton, Colorado erupted after the mayor suspended the Pledge of Allegiance at city council meetings. The battle lines were drawn between so-called old-timers with links to the mining town's past and millennial professionals who have recently moved in from big cities such as Denver and New York. New York Times political correspondent Jonathan Wiseman details how residents in Silverton managed to come together to find common ground in what some are calling a miracle. I would call it a miracle. Mm. <laughs> and Jonathan joins us now. John uh, yeah, go go. Yeah. Jonathan, first of all, just tell us more about what was dividing the town and, and then how, how it's coming back together. You know, Silverton is not exactly any town USA. This is a town that at 9,600 feet above sea level, it's only got about 900 full-time residents. But there are elements of it that are very reminiscent of what's happening in this country. You have a, an older generation that used to be the majority and that are losing the, their grip on power. You have younger, more liberal people coming up and that it created the atmosphere for tension when the mayor, Shane Furman, decided to suspend this, the uh, saying of the Pledge of Allegiance because another more liberal member of the, uh, the town trustees council had been harassed in the streets. And this just led to an absolute eruption. Fox News got involved. Death threats poured in. They had to shut the city council. They had to shut the visitor center. It was it was a terrible mess, and this town that took pride in, you know, neighborliness, loving each other, was really at each other's throats. Um, at one point, the the mayor left town uh, because the sheriff's department told them that the threats on his life were credible, and they didn't have the manpower to protect him. Wow. You know, uh, Jonathan, as I was reading this story, it was. It reminded me so much of a movie I saw on Netflix called The Best of Enemies. It was based mm -hmm. in Durham, North Carolina, 1971. You had a civil rights leader, a, a, an older woman who was a civil rights leader. And you had a guy who was actually secretly the head of the KKK. And somebody came in from outside and believed that they could just get them talking and get groups talking even in the old South, going through the conversion of the news, it would make a difference. And it did. And it was a shock. And anybody that doesn't believe something like that could happen after watching that movie just should read your, uh, your piece, Dialogue. It's an incredible thing. It is. And you have to do it. You know, what the lesson I think in Silverton is that collapse happens fast. Um, but rebuilding is a slow, methodical process. And in Silverton, they took small groups, two, three people met away from the cameras, away from the public spotlight, and just began the conversations about what you want from this town to find out you know, what people had in common. And slowly, methodically, it began knitting the town back together. It did work. Jonathan, it's Lawrence O'Donnell. So Take us through the, the architecture of repair. You're at a point where the mayor has to leave town because of death threats. Then who does what? Who says what to whom that starts this off? And how does this become a larger dialogue? This outside group, um, well, it's not that far outside from Glenwood Springs, Colorado, called uh, Community Builders, they had already um, just begun this process of coming up with like a 10-year plan for developing um, the Silverton, kind of a you know blueprint. And um, they had, Community Builders had experience dealing with division, not so much political division, but, but social divisions in towns. And so they had two, two guys in there, and they began talking to the most influential members, not necessarily the mayor, not necessarily the political people, but people who had real sway in the town. And they began saying, okay, meet with this person and this person. 
meet in private, have them talk. And, it, you know, at first it was tough. I mean, they, I, I heard this story about this woman who walked into one of these meetings. There were only going to be three people in this meeting. She took one look at one of the people who was at her meeting and just turned on her tail and left. Um, I can't talk to this guy. But they kept at it. They, they realized that one of the real power centers of the town was the volunteer fire department, where the very long-term fire chief was kind of taking pot shots at other members of the community. They started working with him, Gil Archuleta, to try to get him on board. And as he began coming around and starting seeing, hey, these guys have a point. If we could just sit down and talk together, maybe we can all find a common vision for the town. Mm -hmm. Then once, the, once they start wearing down the, the centers um, of discord, they can start smoothing things out, and they did. You know, what, what's really right. remarkable in Silverton is some of the people who actually fomented the worst of things. One guy I talked to w admitted that he was the guy who uh, sent the video of the, of the refusal to say the pledge to Sean Hannity on Fox and really brought in the outside world. He was apologetic. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, if I had known that it would have the impact that it did, I would never have done it. Um, another guy, one of the weed dealers in town, he also said that he really feels like he made a huge mistake by fomenting this division. But, you know, I had to meet him in Durango an hour away because he still felt uh, so ostracized uh, for what he had done. I mean, in some ways, that's a bad thing, but in some ways, at least the sense in town was uh, yeah. now that what you need to do is come together. You can't be the guy who is taking shots from the outside. The new piece is online for the New York Times. Amazing. Political correspondent for the Times, Jonathan Wiseman, thank you so much for doing this story and thanks for coming on this morning.